Bird Brain, and today we are talking about cutout animation. So one thing that is kind of hard to do in animation is something that is really organic. Think like leaves falling from a tree or a little bird flying in the sky with emotion. These things are a bit hard to do because we need to kind of recreate them instead of just acting them out, right? So one thing I'm going to show you today is called the Capture Motion Mode. The Capture Motion is a tool that can be found in the advanced animation tools. It's this one. And if I click on it, it's going to give me this window. You have a few things you can customize, such as the capture speed, the keyframe interval, or the smoothing. Usually the capture speed, we leave it as it is, but you know, if you put it 50%, it's gonna kind of go at 50% of the speed you put, which I don't know, I'm not a fan, but it's an option. So I'm gonna leave mine to 100%, and then I'm gonna use this um, tool to move these Tetris blocks. By the way, this is Tetrisio, which is Renee's amazing D&D character. So I thought I would use it today because he's cute and he's perfect to make some Tetris block floats. So to use the capture motion tool, you need pegs. So just make sure that your layers have pegs. I'm going to take my blocks and give them each their own peg. Like this. And then make sure that the pivot point are at the right spot. So there, there, and there. Or there. Where does, where is the center of the L block? I don't know. I'm going to put here, but hmm, I don't know. Uh, and then I'm going to use this block and I'm going to animate it using my capture motion. So to do that, super simple. Um, you can just click on capture and it's going to give you this little time code. I forgot what I call it, that. And then you can just draw your path. I do recommend drawing it from roughly where your pivot point was. And then you can just draw your little block doing whatever it wants in the screen. And then you see here in my timeline, it's going to give me the trajectory of what I did. The fun thing is that this is not final. You can edit it after, even uh, if it's already in your timeline. I can go to smoothing and I can smooth out my trajectory. So it's gonna smooth it out. You can also change the keyframe interval to maybe three instead of two, or put it on ones. It really depends on what you want. You can also change the speed at which it moves. So yeah, it would basically give you a shape that moves on a trajectory. This is a bit stupid seen like that, but the way I usually use the um, capture motion tool is, for example, if I want to have my block kind of floating in space. Of course, you can use it just a normal peg or you can just use a shake node or something, but I do like the freedom that the capture motion tool gives me. So what I also like to do is click on my peg here, and then instead of giving it a trajectory, you can also just have it levitate on place. And it just gives it a natural kind of levitating look <laughs> and I really like it. You can do that with a shake node as well, but you know, capture motion is pretty cool. And yes, yeah, so you can use that for anything you want, but it's a very useful node if you want to have maybe like your things do something like that. It took me like one second to trace it. So yeah, it's a very useful node to use in your scene. Um, if it was, for example, a bird flying, you could just have the bird fly off and get to the moon or something and um, whoop. It's just very fun to play with. The last thing we're going to talk about today is how to edit your path. So if you take your peg and you place the pivot point, make sure that it's at the right place because then if you use the capture motion and you do your animation, you want it to logically follow your pivot point, right? <laughs> and then if you want to see your path, you can use the show control button, which is going to show you your path. If you didn't do that, then your kind of capture motion trail will be offset. So I'm going to show you that by just making a new one and not moving the pivot point. If I go capture motion, I drew my motion here, but then when it shows up on my peg, it's gonna show up here instead. And that's because my pivot point is not at the right spot. Of course, you can always move it later, but you know, better do it good from the get go. <laughs> and this is how you would see your path. If you want to personalize it a bit more, you can use the transform tool and move the dots around. If you need to, very useful. And that's it for this week. I hope you had fun and I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.